Okay, let's talk about uh, self-inductance uh, in a circuit. And um, so, but first, uh, let's let's review um, Faraday's law, um, which says that I get a voltage if I change the magnetic flux uh, contained by a loop of current. Or, I'm sorry, if, if I have a conducting loop. And if I have a conducting loop, I will induce a current to flow. And that current will cr create its own magnetic field that will um, oppose the rate of change of the magnetic flux contained by that loop. And that's the negative sign. Now, one thing I didn't cover, and, and by the way, I do expect you to read the book uh, as well. As, as listen to the lectures and think about the notes and all that. So please do that because there's one thing I, I didn't get into. Um, well, what if, uh, th let's say I have a conducting loop, just make it a rectangle, um, and I've got some kind of magnetic flux contained by this loop. And, um, I you know, I, I, I change you know, really, on, on most problems, when you're trying to figure out what this voltage is, um, you know, they, they give you some expression for the magnetic field, and you also know what the area is. All right, so uh, you can take the derivative of it or whatever and, and, and figure out what the voltage is. But one thing I didn't mention is that you could have, you can multiply the effect by having multiple loops of wire. So if I have one loop of wire like this, Okay, I'm, I'm good. But what if I took the loop, uh, the, the wire, I started here and I made a loop, but then, and I'll just overlap them a little bit. What if I made a second loop like this that had the same area? And it's all one wire. Well, what I essentially did is I doubled the area, didn't I? I doubled the area that has magnetic flux through it. Right? I mean, if I if I took this and just you know put it off to the this, this second loop and just put it off to the side and put magnetic flux in it, it would be twice as much you know area. So if I uh, so what it does is it multiplies the effect. And so um, if you have uh, the number of turn, they call them a turn of wire. Like you start with one, two, three. Or, and by the way, this is what uh, happens in a, an electric generator or a motor. If you look inside, you'll see coils of wire inside. And that's, what this, that's what's going on here. They're multiplying the effect. And so you have, what we do is we just multiply by N. And what is N? N is the number of turns of wire we have. So if they if they tell you how many turns of wire there are, that's it just goes in there. Now if you think about it, if we complete Faraday's law, and you say, all right, well, you have am I still on camera? Yeah. E dot DS. Well, by making another turn of wire, you're just making the 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 length of wire twice as long. So that's another reason why it multiplies. The electric field itself that's induced in the wire isn't going to change, but the distance that that electric field goes through uh, depends on the number of loops. So this is, you know, that, that's Faraday's law. And Remember that the negative sign is kind of where we get Lenz's law from. Lenz's law kind of says, hey, it's going to create a, magne a magnetic, uh, it's going to create a voltage that will create a current that will create a magnetic field that will oppose the rate of change. And this means oppose. That's what that negative sign means there. Okay, well, this is all fine and dandy. Um, 
But there is a loop of wire, like a conducting loop of wire like this that we dealt with a long, long time ago, but we've never really thought of it in terms of um, inductance like this. And that is just a plain old circuit. And what I'll do is, uh, let me erase this. So here's just a, here is a, the EMF of a battery. Okay, so this is just the EMF of our electric cell here. And we'll say the internal resistance is negligible. And this has some resistance R over here. Now, when we close the switch, if we say at T equals zero, I'm gonna close the switch. Well. We just said, well, uh, you know, E equals IR, and we solve for I, and so the current is just equal to E over R. And that's true. If you wait long enough. And it doesn't take very long. In, a mo in most circuits, you won't have to wait very long for this to happen. But I want you to think of Faraday's law here. What is going to happen when I close the circuit? Well, the voltage now has a complete path. and uh, I mean, the, uh, the electrons have a complete path. And so this battery is going to try to push, you know, charges and circulate our pretend positive charges clockwise here. But when I create a current, what do currents create? magnetic fields. Now grab, let me zoom all the way out so you can see my hand. So I'm going to start circulating a current right in this direction. There's my current. So if I take my right hand and rotate it in the, the direction of the current, my thumb points down. So, or, or what you can do is grab the wire. Treat, treat the wire like it's uh, like a long straight wire, the individual segments here. Now here's the plane, here's the area defined by this circuit here, that's enclosed by this circuit. When I close this, do you see that in here, in the shaded area, this is gonna create a magnetic field. And what is the direction of the magnetic field going to be? Huh? Yeah, so it started with no magnetic field at all, right? Because there was no current. And then all of a sudden, you create a, um, you're trying to create a current in there, which is trying to create a magnetic field downward like this. Now, of course, on the outside of the circuit, it's creating field the other way, right? At least in, the, in this plane. It's trying to create like a little tiny dipole, but we're just looking at the plane that the circuit is in. So yeah, the, the, this is forming a, a circular loop, right? If the current is going this way, you grab it with your right hand. And so, you know, you've got a little, it comes out and then back in like that at that part, but the, but we don't care about the outside, we just care about what's going on inside here, uh, the shaded area. And so this is trying to create magnetic flux. But what did we say is true? I mean, what did Lenz's law tell us? Or what does Faraday's law tell us? Yep, Faraday's law says, hey, look folks, um, I don't like I don't like it when you change the magnetic flux in my loop, okay? So just back off, okay? Just back off. And so what it does is it creates what's called a back EMF. It's the circuit's way of saying back off. And what happens here is you get an induced voltage in the circuit that tries to hold back 
the current. And, and so what you have, if you're voltage man and you're looking at this circuit, this, this back EMF tries to keep the current from changing. Okay, if you're going to increase the current in this loop, that means you have to, you're going to be increasing the magnetic field contained by that loop. But it doesn't like to do that. And so it gets a volt. So here's what we're going to, we're going to have a new voltage and it's called the self-inductance of a circuit. And the self-inductance of a circuit, uh, we say is, is E sub L. I'll talk about the L in a minute. <coughs> E sub L, L is, is uh, the, a proper, the property of, um, that a circuit has that resists a, a change in current because of this effect. Um, and it's going to be equal to negative, well, it's proportional. Now, okay, this makes... <laughs> In a weird E and M sort of way, this is going to make a lot of sense if you if you stay with me and follow the logic. What is this rate of change of magnetic flux in here dependent on? Is it dependent on the current? Well, it is dependent on the area, sort of. it's dependent on the rate of change of current. What if the current is constant? Is the magnetic field in here caused by that current going to change with time? No. So only if you have a rate of change of current are you going to see a rate of change of magnetic flux in here and are you going to see this, this back EMF or this, this induced voltage that's going to try to create a current that's going to resist that's going to create a magnetic field that resists the rate of change of magnetic flux. <laughs> so really this back EMF is dependent on the rate of change of current. And the rest of it depends on the circuit. It depends on how the area of the circuit and the, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we just give so a a property of this circuit to resist the rate of change of current uh, by creating a a back EMF, a backwards voltage. Um, we're going to call L. Now, what is L? L is called the inductance. Am I still on camera? I can zoom in a little bit. It's called the inductance of the circuit. And what it tells you about the circuit is um, how, how, how well it resists a, ch a, a changing current. It turns out that circuits resist a changing current. Um, not in the way resistors. Resistors restrict current. But inductance resists a rate of change of current. They got no problem with current. They just don't want you to change it. Yes. Yeah, I think that does kind of make sense. Yeah, that is a way of looking at it. Yeah. Now, look at, let's take a look at uh, Ohm's law, right? We said that E equals IR, or I'll, I'll use delta V because like the voltage drop across the resistor, right? Delta V equals IR. Or I could, no, 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 no. Back, go back, like. I'm going to use this because this R now refers to the whole circuit, like the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now, 
What, what, what do we say when, when we talk about resistance? We said, well, this is going to be, uh, this is how much I resist current, right? Like, hey, this is how many volts you got to apply to me to get this much current to flow through me. That's what a resistor says. Okay, that's what the resistance of the circuit says. It's how many volts you need to apply per to get one amp to flow through it, a certain you know flow of charge to go through it. But let's take a look at L here. L, the inductance of a circuit, is equal to E and um, over. Now, by the way, this is a little bit different because this is not the E of, of the battery. This is E sub L. This is the backwards EMF we're going to get. Now, what this is, is this, oh, you're going to change the current? I'm going to resist that with a voltage going, that's going to that's going to be backwards. Okay, that's why they call it a back EMF. And um, what it does is it slows the, the it, 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 it forces the circuit to take its time to reach its maximum current. Okay. Uh, now let's take a look at the units here for inductance. Okay, and it's not that crazy. It's a volt per amp per second. Now that's the way to think about inductance. You can break these down into, into other fundamental units, but think about how many volts is going you're going to induce in your circuit the voltage drop you're going to induce in your circuit because you're trying to change the current and what does a change in current means is amps per second which is coulombs per second squared which is sort of going to what you were thinking about stuff but um so um what I've got here is um, when you've got voltage man looking at this situation, you know, you start here, and, and voltage man has the superpower of being able to measure the voltage in a circuit uh, ev everywhere instantaneously, all around the circuit. And so when voltage man looks at this, it says, oh, I got a voltage increase, so I'm going to hop up here. But then I've got a voltage drop. And that voltage drop is not in any one place. It's spread out through the whole circuit. And it's the voltage drop due to the self-inductance of the circuit. That is, as this, this voltage here tries to drive a current through the circuit, that current creates a magnetic field. Um, that uh, and the rate of change of that magnetic field creates a voltage as Faraday's law says that tries to hold back uh, you know it's, it acts like a voltage drop and then of course you have minus IR and then you have is equal to zero so what so when you think about this in terms of energy think of this at some instant in time you've got a voltage increase which doesn't vary with time this voltage increase is just part of the circuit it's just the battery and then this voltage drop is there because you're changing the current and this voltage drop is because you've got current you have to have a voltage drop if you have a voltage gain you have to have a voltage drop to get back to zero right to get back voltage band gets back to where he started so um, but anyway, let's, oh, I forgot to talk about this. A volt per amp per second, this weird uh, situation that nature throws at us. We have a name for it. And I think 
you know, don't quote me, you know, don't put this on the internet or anything. Uh, oh, never mind. Um, I think it's the only unit of measure that's uh, named after an American, an American physicist. So if you're any kind of patriot at all, you know what this is. It's called a Henry. <laughs> a volt per amp per second. It's called a Henry. And we just abbreviate it with an H, capital H. No, that was his last name. He's one of these guys that's got a, la a first name for a last name. Michael mm -hmm. Michael Michael. Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. If you're not first, you're last. All right. Now, um, okay. So, now this is weird stuff, and so that's why I go so painfully slow, and my poor Evan is fighting off the long evening of study or something. I don't know. Um, the Langley, like, what? The Langley, named after American astronomer and aeronautical pioneer. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> the, um, so I just want to review what we got going here. We've got a voltage drop throughout the circuit because I'm changing the current in the circuit now. What happens when the current reaches its maximum and it's not changing anymore? What happens to this voltage drop? It, it essentially goes to zero. And you know, so so and, and then we end up with regular old Ohm's law. So we're just adding a new voltage drop that's transient. Transient means it changes with time, it goes away after a little while. It's kind of like an RC circuit in a way. Remember we had an RC circuit that kind of changed with time? But it's, it's a little different, and we will go through that. Uh, one last thing. Um, I've got this expression for the back EMF in a circuit. But notice that that back EMF I, looks a lot like Faraday's law. And so what I can do is I can equate this. I can say, look, this back EMF is going to be equal to negative n yeah this is still ECL uh, L, thank you okay so th this is the the voltage drop I'm getting in my circuit because I'm changing the rate of magnetic flux uh, contained by that circuit and you just have to accept that as being a reality it, and it is a reality of, of nature but that's going to be equal to negative L DIDT. Okay. Well, um, if you look at this equation, this gives me a way of figuring out what the inductance is going to be in a, in a particular circuit. I can solve for L here. And so L. is equal to, well, first of all, remember, you can treat differentials as fractions, right? If I solve for, well, the, the negative sign cancels, the dt's cancel, and I can, um, um, and then when I solve for L, I get n, and then I've got a little change in the magnetic flux over a little change in I, and so I could just integrate both sides essentially. And then I get um, the magnetic flux uh, divided by the current. And you remember this changes with time and this will change with time, but the ratio of the two won't. And so this gives me an expression for figuring out what the inductance of the circuit is. How many loops of wire do you have? How much magnetic flux uh, do I get in the wire uh, depending on how much current there is? Uh, and 
taking that ratio, multiplying by n, will give me the inductance of the um, of the circuit. And not only that, hey, um, this this gives me a, you know, I mean, this gives me a way of figuring out what the inductance is, which I'm, we're going to do next.